Well, Maze Runner, Scorch Trials, 2015. This movie was quite a disappointment for me because although I am not of the uh, targeted age range to enjoy uh, young adult films or books, I really enjoyed the first uh, Maze Runner movie. It was a little bit unique from what I had seen before, and even as a 40-something-year-old uh, viewer, I found it uh, enjoyable. I watched the entire thing, and I was not considering doing a rotten review on the uh, 2014 film, The Maze Runner, because it's not rotten, at least not in my opinion, and uh, not according to Rotten Tomatoes. You know, we have 65% on the tomato meter, 68% on the audience score. Um, I thought it might even come up a little bit on that audience score. I would think it would be fair even in the 70s on that audience score. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a little bit of a few different things. It was a little bit of suspense, a little bit of mystery, a little bit of a horror movie. And uh, it left you just... Uh, watching it, wanting to know exactly what was going on, why were these kids imprisoned in this maze, who was behind it, the mystery aspect of it, and I saw some things in this uh, young adult uh, film that, as an adult, I hadn't seen before. Now, I uh, looked forward to seeing the actual sequel, the, uh, the Maze Runner Scorch Trials, when it came out on HBO. I watched it, and... Uh, uh, after about 10 minutes, I was disappointed. I mean, I knew that they had already escaped the maze from the first movie, uh, but I didn't realize that it was going to turn into more of a zombie-type movie, and uh, my God, we've seen zombie movies so many times before. I mean, you can call them something else, but basically they're just zombies. And uh, it kind of took elements from different zombie movies, and the kids, they've escaped the maze. Uh, the kids, I call them kids, but they're obviously over the age of 18, these actors, but uh, I'll just call them kids. They escape the maze, and they go on the run to... Uh, you know, I don't know, it's kind of like a combination of they're motivated to survive, they're motivated to get to home, wherever that might be, and they're motivated to uh, figure out what the hell's going on, like the audience would be. I went along for the ride, I had an open mind, and uh, I just found that it was rotten. Uh, it had a lot of plot problems. Uh, it was just disappointing on top of it because it took all the elements from the first one and just uh, forgot all about those and just made it into some kind of uh, post-apocalyptic uh, zombie adventure film. But full of plot holes, um, f full of characters that all of a sudden become really dumb and do dumb things just for the sake of the plot to get some uh, kind of contrived suspense going. And the film spent a lot of time not in any kind of a maze, but in um, a lot of dark corridors in a kind of horror-esque fashion, and it wasn't very scary, and it wasn't original, and it was dumb. Uh, it has 46% on the tomato meter, 54% on the audience score. It has over 62,000 audience reviews, so it's certainly still relevant in 2020, January 2020. Um, but let's get right into this on the audience reviews of uh, the Maze Runner, or Maze Runner, The Scorched Trials. Um, right at the top here, from 22 hours ago, we have a three-star review. An upgrade over the original, but still quite mediocre as a whole, 6.5 out of 10. Well, if I have to give this a star review, and of course I do, I'm going to say that this is two stars, no higher than two stars. I mean that this film actually peaks out at two stars. Now, the first Maze Runner, I would have given that three stars. I think it's worthy of three stars. This one, it dropped a full star down to two, and I only mean that it peaks at two. There are points in this film that go down to even one star for me because the plot logic fails just become completely too obvious and I can't just hand wave them away. My suspension of disbelief gets broken, particularly towards the very um, ending minutes of this film. But um, no, this is an upgrade. This reviewer says an upgrade over the original. This is definitely a downgrade. It took everything that was, um, you know, interesting to me in the first one and just kind of chucked it away and turned it into something else. And uh, I knew it couldn't be what the first one was, of course, because the characters did escape the maze in the first one, but the maze was the most interesting part, and they couldn't find a way to rekindle that mystery element for me, and I'm sure a lot of other audience members um, would agree that uh, this one, it's it's just not what the first one was. So let's move down. One star, January 2nd, 2020. The plot had nothing to do with the book. 
They transformed an intriguing universe into a simple zombie movie, and I don't understand why. Um, yeah, well, I'll just admit I haven't read the book. I know this whole um, three film series is based on one book, or at least it was one book before the movies were made, and I have no knowledge of the book. Like I said, I'm not the target audience for a young adult uh, fantasy novel. I don't really appreciate most of them. For example, The Hunger Games. I actually read some of the first book just to see what the excitement was about when the films were coming out and were very much hyped out there, and uh, I couldn't get into it. And um, I barely got through the first Hunger Games and the sequels. I got through the second one against my will, and I never tried the third one, and I'm not planning on trying the third one because, although I'm sure they're rotten, I just can't get through the source material. I can't get through the movies. Um, I don't want to even watch the first one again. It's I'm just not the target audience for young adult stuff. But having said that, young adult stuff once in a while does uh, get my interest going. And The Maze Runner, I just didn't know anything about it, so I gave it a shot. I actually enjoyed the first one, and I'm sorry, the second one, it went down into... Uh, it went down into... Um, what would be Hunger Games territory for me. Um, it became much more of an obvious young adult story and it just started stuffing in those plot holes. And what I mean by young adult story is that in the first movie there wasn't any messaging about, um, you know, the fact that all the characters were teens or, or young adults. This second movie, it had a lot of out right in your face messaging. Um, I don't know why, but it really made the point, uh, you could just see it, that they were trying to tell the audience that, well, every character in the movie that's uh, over the age of 30 is somehow evil or flawed or a villain, or they're just not likable, they're not quite the good guys. Uh, one character actually does kind of become a good guy, but he starts out as a bad guy, and it's very obvious that uh, anybody in this film that's over the age of 30 by 30 you're a villain and uh, I can kind of hand wave that away maybe it's a young adult theme um, I didn't pick that up so much in the Hunger Games but in this second movie of the Scorch Trials it's very obvious and I, I don't think that's really good because um, you know it's not just young adults that you want to go purchase tickets for these movies it's people even my age that you want to go see these things you want to maximize your revenue right so putting in the messaging that you know uh, everybody over the age of 30 is just a villain of some kind. That's really kind of dumb. Uh, but that's not the fatal flaw in this. For me, it's more along the lines of the actual logic fails in this. But let's move on. Um, I'm not going to entertain any review over three stars because this is Rotten Reviews for a reason. Um, and I'm not going to believe uh, reviewers putting over three stars. I'm not interested in fanboys. I want to hear what works and doesn't work with this film, mostly what doesn't work. Uh, two and a half stars, September 29, 2019. There was not much added to the plot. You leave this movie with a lot more questions. The main character gets annoying to watch. Yeah, the first movie, the main character, he wasn't annoying. In this one, he starts making really dumb decisions just to have a contrived suspense in the plot. Uh, and we've seen all this stuff before in other zombie type movies. Um, I've made quite a, a list here. Um, we spend a lot of time at the beginning of this film. We spend a lot of the time inside um, like dark passageways and the, the film really slows down. Like first off, the characters escape this uh, wicked um, medical military base facility of course that's a good thing because if the whole film had taken place in there I would have shut this thing off but it isn't very long before the characters find out that uh, the corporation known as Wicked is evil and they're living up to their name of being wicked I suppose um, they escape from the facility and go on the run and they go across some desert territory and right away they're inside some old abandoned buildings um, they spend a lot of time in there. The plot really slows down. The action slows down to a crawl. And we just have a lot of dark scenes where it's obviously some kind of old shopping mall or pavilion of some kind. And uh, the characters spend a lot of time in there just looking at old junk and wondering what's going on. 
And that's also where the plot holes, the logic in the film starts to peek into your mind where you're starting to ask questions on, well, what happened to the outside world? What kind of apocalypse was there? In the first film, it basically tells you there's some kind of viral outbreak. Um, that's why they were in the maze, because they're kind of like lab rats in the maze for medical reasons. There's a virus that has uh, decimated modern uh, civilization. But when you escape into the wasteland, you kind of find out, and the movie continues along this line, that there has been some kind of geophysical apocalyptic event on Earth in the past. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's never explained. It's a separate issue from any virus outbreak. You have uh, cities, uh, modern cities that are in a state of decay, uh, in which it looks like... Um, they're in a state of decay. The buildings themselves, uh, it looks like hundreds of years have passed, centuries, because the buildings are falling over on themselves. Um, this is just straight up logic fail because other things in the film look like they're a lot newer, like there are car wrecks. Um, there are wreckages of cars that have been out in the you know elements for these centuries, I suppose, yet they're not nearly as decomposed as the buildings are. Um, there are other things laying around, like interior furnishings and stuff, that would have long decayed away and been complete dust, and they wouldn't be actual furnishings anymore if centuries had passed. And yet there are vehicles that are just old vehicles that can't be more than 50 or 60 years old, uh, and they're weather and they've been repaired and yet the buildings are collapsing like hundreds and hundreds of years have gone by it doesn't really make any logical sense but although at the same time it's very visually beautiful a lot of money was spent on the visual effects and you're quite convinced that you're in this post-apocalyptic environment like centuries in the future it looks fantastic I could see hardly any flaws with it um, I didn't you know slow-mo frame by frame advance it to find flaws I'm sure there are flaws but from just uh, somebody watching this with an open mind. The visuals were fantastic. They were even uh, better than I thought they would be. However, none of it made any sense. Um, none of, uh, you don't get a real sense of how much time has passed since uh, modern civilization has been destroyed. And you don't get any answers as to what happened to it. It's certainly not just the virus. It's also a geophysical event in that uh, the ocean has actually disappeared and you're left with a desert as a result. And you can see ships uh, sitting there that used to be on the ocean and all the types of uh, environmental changes that would go along with the ocean just drying up. It's not told to anybody. Uh, uh, the plot never tells you whether the ocean, the entire ocean is gone or it just like uh, dropped hundreds of meters and it's nowhere around the area that the story takes place anymore. Uh, it, it makes no sense. A lot of this makes no sense. And the movie doesn't attempt to explain this at all. No lore, no background materials, no flashbacks, nothing. You just continue along this uh, post-apocalyptic world and you just never get any of these answers. And this is aside from actual logical fails in the story itself with the characters. Uh, but let's move on. Um, let's see. Half a Star, September 28, 2019. What's worse than an in-name cash grab of a movie? An in-name cash grab of a movie that sets up another in-name cash grab of a movie. Yeah, you can tell this is a second in a trilogy because it suffers from what people have generally started to call um, second film fatigue. It sags in the middle. Uh, you can tell it's written to uh, be wrapped up in a third installment and therefore the second is very weak and leaves you kind of hanging with no resolution to anything or resolutions that are so minor they're not satisfied and that's what this movie does and it's like makes you feel like it's an entire cash grab and I guess it is because uh, in my very quick research I've found that there's only one book and yet this is a trilogy it's not like something in the Hunger Game universe where multiple books are there and the movies are matching the uh, books so mo for the most part uh, same thing with Harry Potter there are multiple books and there are multiple movies but in this one there's just one book and they just Figured they need to stretch this into a trilogy to, I guess, to uh, make a gigantic cash grab because you really feel it in the second film. It's a very big disappointment, a step down and a downgrade from the first movie, which was fine on its own. I enjoyed it. Um, let's see, we've got four star reviews. I'm not going to entertain those. Three stars, July 17, 2019. No good dialogue, no character development. It does advance the plot but in a direction that is so far from the first movie. This is nowhere near the same as the last movie. Expect 
expect for the amount of running in it. Yeah, except for the amount of running in it. Uh, yeah, the characters run around. They're chased by zombies a lot, and they run around uh, being chased by those zombies. There's a lot of that. Um, but it's not exciting. It's nothing we've seen before. In fact, it just makes it more problematic because, as usual, uh, certain main characters always just escape in the nick of time somehow, and it just adds an element of uh, more unbelievability to it, more logical fail. And I've got quite a list, so let's go on my list here. You know, the first thing I noticed about... Um, the title of the film, The Scorched Trials. Well, I guess the land outside of the facility that they're traveling through, this wasteland, is called the Scorched Land. You never get an explanation on what happened. Why is it called the Scorched Land? Uh, the movie never wants to explain. But in any case, it kind of reminds me, it started to remind me of the video game Fallout 76 from Bethesda because they call the zombies in uh, Fallout 76 the Scorched. And they almost like resemble the zombie creatures slash people in this film. They look about the same and they behave the same and they're not said zombies. You know, they don't call these uh, zombies zombies in the uh, movie and they don't call them the scorched. But I was waiting for them to start referring to them as the scorched because it felt like, you know, Fallout 76 um, came about after this movie did. So it almost seemed to me like uh, Bethesda, the software company, the game makers, they had uh, ripped off their Scorched from uh, for the game Fallout 76 from this movie. Um, I don't know if that's true, but it felt like that. And I was expecting to hear the characters in this refer to these zombies as the Scorched, but that never happened. So yeah, I think if... Um, they had actually ripped off the name there would have been trouble there legally but I just have the feeling that uh, Bethesda like ripped off stuff in Fallout 76 from this particular film in a lot of different ways but let's move on one and a half stars April 28 2019 the movie starts mysterious and slowly reveals who the big bad guy is wicked is shown as bad because they are bad luckily there are some new interesting characters introduced that last pretty far into the movie we also get introduced to the disease that plagues the planet in more detail. Everything I'm saying is pretty much just what the movie is. The only way to describe how good it is is to say it's just a continuation of a series of young adult films based off a series of young adult novels. Well, I'm not so sure it was a series of novels. I think there was just one book when they started making these films, so I'm not so sure on that. Now, yes, this reviewer says um, they've introduced some interesting new characters. Well, let me just tell you, there's an interesting, well, I don't call him interesting. I just call him a callback character. There's a character um, played by, uh, if I can pronounce his name properly, uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Uh, most people know him by uh, the name of uh, Gus uh, playing the character Gus or Gustavo in um, uh, the Breaking Bad uh, AMC series and that's where I've seen him in uh, before this and uh, you know in this film I wouldn't bring this up because actors are in a lot of things but this character I guess his name is Jorge and this he actually calls bad guys and good guys friend and foe alike he keeps calling them Hermano and uh, that seems a deliberate choice in the dialogue and at first I was kinda wondering why and then I remembered he played Gus in Breaking Bad and uh, yes he was the owner of 14 or 15 franchises of a restaurant chain called uh, Los Pollos Hermanos. And uh, that's like the Chicken Brothers, but it's kind of reversed around, not, not correct Spanish grammar. But in any case, yes, uh, he was the boss of Los Pollos uh, Hermanos. And uh, he keeps calling everybody Hermano. And... Uh, I got that after a couple of times that they were trying to make some callback to Breaking Bad. I don't know why. There was no purpose for that. It just pulls you out of the film, but it had to be delivered. It's too much of a coincidence. And his character starts off as a bad guy and then uh, later kind of joins the team and becomes one of the good guys. But um, I'm sorry to say that it didn't matter if he considered you friend or foe. He just kept calling you hermano, which doesn't make sense because why would somebody want to keep calling you brother? Even if you're somebody he's about to kill, he needs to call you brother. And then when you're on his side, he calls you brother. That doesn't make any sense, um, quite aside from the fact that it's a callback to Breaking Bad. But, you know, it was on my list because it was just too obvious for me on that one. Um, 
Where did the water go so suddenly? Yeah, the oceans have disappeared. There's no explanation what that has to do with anything with the virus. Um, not even the most cursory gloss over attempt at explaining where the ocean went and where all the other, um, you know, the result of all that. Um, why did this happen? Uh, it's quite a coincidence, don't you think, that a virus breaks out that decimates humanity, but at the same time there's some kind of geophysical change with the Earth? Uh, you have to explain one or both of these or how they're related to each other. Um, there's a lot of ways the film could have done that, but they just didn't bother, and I don't know why, because there was plenty of running time to do so. It's very strange. Um, let's see. Three stars, January 18, 2019 strengths. A sequel is usually a safe bet for a franchise to bump up the action and big budget stuff. That's true here. There aren't many moments of slowdown. The characters figure out what's happening in their supposed safe zone quickly and escape by the end of the first act. The quick moving story ensures the pacing is this is strong. Dylan is again solid as the lead but feels like he has much less to work with. Yeah, it, it's pretty much a good pace to this film except for one sequence that they're inside of a building like an old shopping mall just looking around at stuff. I'm not sure why it had to slow down like that. It didn't accomplish anything except begin to bore me. Uh, the rest of the film's fine. It moves along. It never gets slow after that. But there are just so many logical fails. Um, first off, the dumb characters. Um, there's a point at which uh, two of the main characters are in a tunnel, like a storm drain system, and it is shown to them exactly um, where they need to go. Like They can see the light at the end of the tunnel, literally, so they know which way to go to escape the tunnels and the danger that's in the tunnels, uh, namely the zombies. But no, they just have to be dumb and go explore the zombies, even though obviously it's the most dangerous thing you could ever do. And they just go continually into the layer of the zombies just to take a look at them. Uh, and just stand there as the zombies kind of sprout out of the walls. They're like part of some kind of fungal creature or something. And uh, they have to wait till the zombies sprout out and uh, start chasing them before they decide to go the proper way. And then when they do run out the proper way that they knew was the proper way before, um, you know, it's like they're put at the edge of a cliff face just for the sake of making it exciting. And all of it it was just to bump up the excitement and have this contrived chase with these zombies through the tunnels. And none of it would have happened if the characters just didn't deliberately make really stupid decisions, like life-threatening dumb decisions that they wouldn't have done in the real world. Why do you deliberately walk into a layer of zombies knowing you're going the wrong way just because you're curious? I'm sorry, young adults, sure, but suicidal young adults, none of them are suicidal in this film. Well, there is one character that kills himself when he becomes infected by the zombie disease, but for the most part, none of these characters want to die. They definitely want to live, and uh, they just do completely dumb, illogical things to make the plot move forward. And there's another part at which they become very dumb. Uh, the main character, he encounters some kind of weird guy in a city who's got some kind of party going on where he's got everybody hopped up on some hallucinogenic substance. And he asks the main character to drink this hallucinogenic substance and inside he'll find the friends he's looking for. Um, it's completely dumb and he just needs to do this for no reason just to get bombed and start having delusions and uh, stagger around and pass out in this weird party. And uh, the whole thing would have never happened if this character hadn't have done a completely stupid thing. Like, yeah, sure, there's a strange guy. He's really weird in this weird environment. And he's surrounded by weirdos. And he's definitely not your friend. And he gives you this stuff and tells you to go ahead and drink it. And you just go ahead and drink it this green liquid. Yeah, like, how do these characters, they're so smart to, you know, get out of this wicked uh, military facility, but they're also dumb enough to do stuff like the two things I just mentioned. Again, the plot needs them to be this dumb, and it took me out of the story. Um, they're just dumb when the plot needs to, them to be, and then all of a sudden super smart and clever later on. I'm sorry, but I just can't believe that. It's complete nonsense. Even in a, a young adult story, this is a complete logical fail. Dumb characters for the sake of getting the plot to work. 
and the plot wasn't all that great. The stuff that happened because they're dumb could have been done the same way in a lot of different ways, and it could have been more exciting. So it's just a complete fail. Um, let's move on. Two and a half stars, December 26, 2018. So we're a year ago on these reviews. This movie was rushed. I found I find it complicated and nothing major happened. It served as a setup movie for the death cure. Yeah, nothing much happened. They went from point A to B and uh, kind of met up with this resistance uh, rebel group that was in the mountains. But along the way, nothing else really happened. And when they get there, there's a whole lot of logical plot fails. The resistance group that somehow been able to stay up in the mountains and keep themselves secret, uh, secreted away from wicked uh, and it's managed to defend itself from all manner of marauders and maybe wicked incursions and whatnot. They're completely dumb because they've got all these weapons like for example they've got a 50, a 50 caliber uh, machine gun mounted on a truck bed uh, technical if you will and uh, you know they're supposed to be this uh, ragtag military outfit and yet the weapon's just not loaded it's just sitting there not loaded and they don't decide to try loading it until wicked shows up on a couple of helicopters that take quite a while to get there but they can hear them coming and of course the plot has them desperately trying to load this 50 cal that should already be loaded um, and everybody there is armed with lethal force like all the different rebels in this camp uh, in the mountains they all have rifles they all have uh, 308s and whatnot and the movie shows that yet um, when Wicked shows up just on two helicopters um, nobody can use their rifles nobody chooses to use their rifles and the 50 cal conveniently wasn't loaded I don't know why. Oh, I know why, because the plot has to be like that for Wicked to show up on helicopters land and for their soldiers to get out and start fighting. And here's the other plot fail here. All the Wicked soldiers, almost all of them are shown to have non-lethal weapons. They have basically stun guns with projectile stun darts. And they're up against actual, um, you know, uh, rebels in the mountains with real weapons and 50 cals and 308 rifles. Yet, um, these guys with stun guns just overrun the camp. And that's the other logical fail. There are a lot more rebels with actual lethal weapons and arms than there are wicked soldiers with stun guns. And yet, still somehow, the wicked soldiers overrun them and take over the camp and win the battle. Um, it's completely ridiculous and it just has to happen because it has to be set up that way for the plot to get to where it has to go to set up the third film. Completely stupid and I just couldn't believe a second of it. It really went straight off the cliff into Nonsenseville in that final uh, battle in the rebel camp. It makes no sense. And you have a doctor in this rebel camp that somehow come up with the cure. She's figured everything out uh, from her little tent uh, laboratory. Whereas the scientists at Wicked, they've been researching all this stuff for years, presumably, maybe decades. And they haven't figured out a cure for the disease. They're still working on it. And they've got multi-million dollar laboratories and etc everything you can imagine and somehow this doctor set up in a tent in this rebel base that's just like you know basically throwing up an army tent and putting some uh, shelves with lab equipment in there um, she's all got it all figured out she knows how to uh, make the uh, cure or the uh, vaccination for the disease she knows where it comes from she knows how to extract it she knows uh, exactly how it's gonna work she's got it all figured out and of course she gets killed during the battle so because the movie needs her to die um, it's nothing it's completely garbage it's the worst stuff you've ever seen in a young adult story and it didn't have to go this way but it did uh, this story was completely acceptable until all this stuff that happened in the rebel camp in the final act just went to total shit um, let's move on four and five star reviews I'm sorry I'm not gonna read those um, this thing's completely rotten. Peaks at two stars. If I had to put a star rating just on that final act, I would say, again, half a star. It's so bad. Um, one star, October 3rd, 2018. A huge letdown compared to the first Maze Runner. The Scorch Trials is nothing but jump scares and empty screen time. Yeah, there's some jump scares in the tunnels with the zombies and doesn't add up to anything. It's not scary. Again, this isn't a horror movie. It's just got some elements of a zombie movie thrown into it and, uh, yeah.
really bad. One and a half star, September 21, 2018. No reader of the book should watch this movie. The opening of the movie was entertaining, but everything after the escape goes downhill. If you don't read the books, you may enjoy this movie. But if you do, then you're most likely not going to like it. It strays too far from the book. Changing or completely leaving out key parts of the lore, I guess. As a movie of its own, I couldn't say. I don't think the movie is bad, but if you read the books, it's not recommended. Well, let me respond directly to that review. I did not read the books. Never heard of them. I'm not the target audience for that type of material. And yet, I enjoyed the first movie. As somebody that doesn't know a damn thing about... Um, this franchise or this series of books, if it is a series, I enjoyed the first movie. I, I really did. I sat all the way through it. I enjoyed it to the end. Uh, I went into this with an open mind and this became complete garbage. And when it got to the end, it was laugh out loud because the plot was so ridiculous. So I'm answering this reviewer. Um, I'm sorry, but I think it's actually reversed. If you're a fan of the books, maybe you find more redeemable in this because you're looking forward to how the third one ties up the story. I don't know, but as just a film, as a regular audience goer, somebody not initiated with the franchise, um, I have to say it's a complete fail. It's really bad. Um, thank God I never paid money for any of this. If I had seen the first film in the theaters, I would have been okay with it. I would have said, well, that was a nice, enjoyable uh, way to pass the time as long as I didn't uh, pay too much for the ticket. Uh, but the second one, if I had seen it in the theater, oh, I would have just been so upset. Thank God I just saw this when it came out on HBO. Uh, let's see, two and a half stars. Not a terrible sequel to The Maze Runner, but it is a rather underwhelming and kind of disappointing sequel that could have been better. Also, one of the main villains in this movie is way too obvious. I won't say who he is, but you can tell just from looking at him and listening to his dialogue that he's going to be one of those people that seems like he's up to no good. Overall, not bad, but not but definitely not very good. Yeah, there aren't any plot twists in this that worked for me. There is a plot twist at the end where one of the good guys or one of the good girls uh, betrays them, of course, so that Wicked can find them. The plot needs this to happen, otherwise the final battle with Wicked would have never happened up in the mountain uh, encampment. Uh, but it, you can see that a million miles coming because there's a scene earlier where about halfway through the film, you see the same girl character uh, looking very lengthily or longingly at a, uh, you know, like a walkie-talkie um, that uh, one of Wicked soldiers has dropped during an earlier confrontation with them. And so you know she took it for some reason. And of course, at the end, it's shown that uh, it doesn't show her on the radio, but you kind of figure out she used that radio to call Wicked and tell them where the uh, encampment was in the mountains. And it's kind of a logical plot fail there, too, because, you know, Wicked is shown having not only helicopters, but these uh, kind of nonsensical, futuristic Osprey-type vehicles. Uh, looks like something taken out of Ter Terminator Salvation, for example. And they have a lot of technology, and surely they would have found these rebels just out in the open, up in this mountainous area. They would have been very easy to spot with all this type of uh, technology that Wicked had. So the whole idea the rebels were just up there and nobody knew where exactly they were, it's really nonsensical on top of it. The movie never gives you any little thing that you could use in your mind to make that believable. It isn't. These rebels uh, would have been found and spotted easily by anybody with Wicked's technology, so it's laughable. Um, and other characters certainly out in the wild know where this in, um, you know, encampment is. It's not like that big of a secret. Doesn't work. Two and a half star, September 3rd, 2018. Haven't we already seen this movie? And why didn't they stay in the maze according to the title? I mean, just shoot him already if he is such a problem. Yeah, you know, it's still called Maze Runner and then Colon and then The Scorch Trials. Uh, yeah, there's no more maze. So if you're expecting something with the maze, no, no. Uh, the maze was in the first one and then uh, it derails into a completely different uh, type of thing. No more mazes, even though Maze Runner is still in the title. So even by just the titles, it's kind of clickbait, isn't it? It's kind of telling you it's going to have something to do with the first one, but really it doesn't. 
two and a half stars, August 31, 2018. Um, very slow. The scenes are beautiful, but I was thinking, where's the end most of the time after one third of the movie? After finished this, finally, I was thinking if I still want to watch the third one. Yeah, that was my thought too. After this one finished, I was like, hmm. I don't want to watch the third one, but you know what? When I come across the third one, and um, you know when I come across it, and I can watch it for free at my leisure, I will do a rotten review on it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to find that it's rotten, uh, and I don't have to even cheat to look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I'm pretty sure it's rotten. Let's see, three and a half stars. I won't read it. Half a star, August 18, 2018. Awful, sickly, corny ending. Don't bother. Yes, exactly. The ending is where it goes horribly wrong um, and it was redeemable all with its flaws and everything until it got to that end up in the uh, rebel base that's where it went horribly rotten uh, let's see what other plot fails do we have I mentioned the um, you know we don't really know how much time has passed the movie never explains it buildings are crumbling really uh, quickly like it's been centuries but cars and furniture and stuff it looks like it's only been you know a dozen years doesn't make sense um, yeah, there's a part at which it suddenly becomes winter. There's snow on the ground up in the uh, Rebel base uh, encampment area, but you're not way up on the peaks of these mountains they showed earlier. You're in an open flat area, though. It might be a higher elevation, but it's not that much significantly higher than the rest of the film. Yet, it's almost like World of Warcraft type geography. Uh, you're in a desert uh, that's near an ocean that's all like looks like the Sahara Desert or the Gobi Desert, and then all of a sudden you pass through, you know, a, um, a tunnel, a highway tunnel through some mountains, and then you're in like a high desert area of New Mexico with snow and stuff, and it doesn't work it's like literally they filmed this at a different time because they're outside in this desert area and it's obviously room temperature or above you don't see their breath then when they're in the rebel encampment area out in the middle of the sunshine there is patches of snow here and there and you can see their breath when they're talking during the middle of the day so it is as though they filmed this uh, during different parts of the year during different seasons and it just doesn't work it's not believable just by saying they're at a higher elevation um, Let's see. Yeah, the disease antidote story. Um, you know, part of the plot shows you that this doctor in this rebel encampment, she has determined uh, exactly how the disease works and how the uh, her cure for it is going to work, her antidote for it. It's not really a cure. It just slows it down. But it looks like something taken out of Dead Rising, you know, where you have Zombrex and it keeps you from becoming a zombie even though you're still infected. You have to keep taking Zombrex to... Uh, it's video game logic. You have to keep taking this serum, otherwise uh, after a certain amount of time you become a zombie. And that's what this film does. There's like a serum that uh, you have to take that keeps you from be turning into one of these zombies. And uh, the way that this doctor explains how it works and how it has to be extracted from the brains of human children, it doesn't make a whole logic. I mean, the logic of it doesn't work at all, even with the first movie on why they had them in this maze. No, 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 no. You just, um, you want to kind of rewind it and see if there is logic and you just missed it, but there isn't. Uh, it's just going to confuse your mind if you try to figure out the medical logic to it. It's, it's complete nonsense. Um, let's see. Yeah, the 50 cal wasn't loaded and, uh, it, it had to be empty so that you could have the rest of the plot happen at the end. If that 50 cal had been loaded like any half-assed bunch of rebel soldiers had had it loaded and on the ready, um, I'm sorry, but when those two helicopters got within range, it would have just lit them up and that would have been the end of uh, Wicked's little assault with stun guns on this encampment. But the 50 cal needed to be unloaded so that all could happen at the end. Uh, they're the dumbest rebels of all time. Um, let's see, yeah, the rebels outnumber all the wicked soldiers with stun guns, but somehow the wicked soldiers just overwhelm them. Um, the Osprey jet hybrid uh, type of thing looks like it was ripped off from Terminator Salvation. It doesn't work. The actual aerodynamics of it don't make any sense. Um, it has propellers on top like a regular Osprey vehicle has. Now these jet, magical jet burner type things that it also uses 
don't make any sense. They wouldn't work with the propellers. They would be working against each other. Anybody with just a cursory knowledge of aerodynamic uh, vehicles would know that this doesn't make any sense. But the whole reason it's in the film is just because it looks so cool. Somebody thought it did, and it looked futuristic and cool, so they threw it in. But really, it's just a really piss-poor attempt to do a callback to the Terminator franchise, and it fails. Um, yeah, it predictably leads to the third movie, and instead of wanting to see the third movie, you're just left uh, shaking your head, vowing that uh, you're not going to waste your time watching the third one. So I can um, pretty much guarantee the third one's going to be rotten. But let's finish one more page of these reviews. Two stars, uh, Spanish, but I can already tell what it says. Not a original, meaning it's not original. Yeah, it's like it becomes a zombie movie. Uh, two stars, June 8, 2018. Maze Runner Scorch Trials is the continuing saga from the original where the seven kids are held captive for their blood to cure mankind. I'm not sure how or why zombies exist in this flick, but that was the whole purpose of creating a maze to weed out the weak and drain the blood of the strong. The first one didn't give much answers, just questions, but it was captivating with a better script than this mess. I would watch the third to see how it would end, but this one was not as good as the original. Yeah, I agree with all of that, and I'm saying that um, I can guarantee you the third one's going to be worse than this, but let's move on. Uh, one Star, May 7, 2018. Um, emotional moments that don't work, no logic or reason to anything. If you like people yelling, come on and let's go, you may like this. Yeah, it's got like a lot of that in it, uh, the kids being chased around by zombies and a lot of uh, people tripping and falling and just barely escaping afterwards by a lot of that tripping and falling, just barely escaping through the door and slamming it behind you and holding it against the zombies. And we've seen this all before, along with come on and let's go and oh my God, her and all that big whoop de doo I mean it's very it's all the worst stuff of other young adult type stuff and the worst stuff out of zombie movies zombie movies that aren't R rated you know when you've got a PG-13 um, you can't have zombies actually get a hold of the main characters and do their business with them because it too, it's too gory so of course you know they have to just escape or get scratches or whatever and completely stupid. Uh, two stars, May 5th, 2018. This is a very tedious sequel that brings nothing new to the story, unlike the third installment, which is much better. Uh, we'll see about that. I'm just not gonna... I just don't believe you. You think the third one's better? Well, we're gonna see. I will eventually get my hands on that and I'll dig into it. There's no way. There's no way. It's not going to redeem this. You already know where this is going. It's already very incredibly highly cliched at the end of this. So the whole next movie has to be cliched in the same way. We've seen all this before. Um, three stars. Genuinely got a few scars in this film. I like the cast. I don't think there's anything wrong with the cast. They work. The only thing that doesn't work for me in the cast is the British character. His British accent, his British language, it doesn't make any sense. He's a young adult, a teen in this film. Where did he come from? How did he get from Britain to here? Um, how come nobody else is British? And how does he have British uh, manner and, uh, you know, like saying bloody and stuff like that? How does he have British uh, talk and uh, accent and he's in with a bunch of Americans? It doesn't make sense. Um, I'm sorry, but you've got to do better than that. If you're going to put a British actor in there, explain how he got there. Uh, at least don't have him talking with British uh, expressions because how would a young adult you know, 17-year-old, for example, 16, 17, even 18, uh, if they've been in this type of environment in North America their whole lives, how do they use British uh, English? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, three stars. Um, no, I'm not going to entertain that. In fact, I'm just going to call this and go back to the first page. Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials, 54% on the audience score. I'm going to say I disagree. I think this deserves more in the 30% range. Um, it is that bad. Just the final act of this brings it down so damn hard. It makes it irredeemable. It makes the third one not worth watching because you know how bad it's going to be. 46% on the tomato meter. Well, some of the critics obviously found something interesting in it. Maybe they praised it for the visuals because I'll give it that. The visuals in this were fantastic. I was convinced I was in an apocalyptic, uh, post-apocalyptic um, North American environment. 
could have been any city, but uh, it was very convincing. It looked very good. I'll give it that. But otherwise, not much redeemable in this at all. Um, so I'm going to leave it, and I'm looking forward to just ripping apart the third one at this, part, <laughs> at this point. And I will see you on the next episode of Rotten Reviews.